we have a very, very difficult to explain episode. God comes to Abraham. Abraham, I want you to take your beloved son, Isaac, the one who you waited a hundred years for, and I want you to take him to Mount Moriah and offer him as a burnt offering. Abraham gets up in the morning, chops the wood, gathers his servants and his only son, Isaac, the one who he waited a hundred years for, the one who's supposed to inherit all of his spiritual gifts as well as his physical gifts, the one who was supposed to transmit the Torah for all times to the rest of the world, that child, the beautiful child, the one who never gave his father any problems, that child he now takes to offer him as a sacrifice. The question is, why would God ask this of a great man? Didn't God know that Abraham would do so? What was the purpose of having Isaac bound and almost killed and only by the last second intervention of the angel is Isaac's life spared? And as a result of this event, our matriarch, our mother Sarah, who in her Holy Spirit saw the events unfolding at Mount Moriah, at that moment, as the knife is put to the neck of Isaac, her soul expires. This is horrible. The mother dies before knowing that her son will live. Why does God ask this of Abraham? So we have several approaches. The approach of Rashi, who is the standard commentator, is that God asks Abraham to fulfill this test because this test will show the world your special relationship with me. A child who he had prayed for and hoped for and waited for and suffered for for so many years. That child he was ready to give up for God. And that shows you the depth and the profundity of the relationship that Abraham had to God. A relationship that was beyond intellect. A relationship that was without end. That's approach number one. So the question is not for Abraham. It's not for God. It's in order to show how special Abraham is so that the people of the world will not question why we are the chosen people. The second approach is an approach brought in various commentators as well, that when a person goes through a test of faith and remains faithful and overcomes the test, that this is called a nace, a nace or a nisoyin, a test. The idea of a nace, a nisoyin, a test is to lift the person up because the word nace means a flag, a flag that was held up high so that people could see it. The function and the role of this test was to elevate Abraham to a higher level because even though Abraham had the potential to do this, Clearly, the emotions that he had to live through while he was engaged in that process of offering his only son, his beloved son, as an offering to God, 
that he was going to snuff out the tribe's life even while his whole being was one of love, one of kindness and giving. The fact that he was able to contain those feelings of love and giving and kindness in order to perform God's commandment lifted Abraham to the highest level possible as a human being. And this gift Abraham gave to his children, that we have the potential for reaching the highest level possible whenever the circumstances so dictate. The third approach is the Hasidic approach, which is that the test itself is good. The Akeda, the binding of Isaac, is the symbol of our people. It is the symbol of commitment and also the defining focus and point of our commitment to God. We are ready to do anything for God. We are not ready to kill others for it. If we must fight, we are ready to fight. But our job in sanctifying God's name is to put our own life on the line, not put the other person's life on the line. Abraham had to offer his own son, not someone else's son. When he offered a sacrifice, in its stead, it was not another baby boy. It was an animal, a ram. For you see, the Akeda wasn't just an uplifting of the person. The Akeda defined, the binding of Isaac defined our people. And not only did it define our people, but it refined our character and it made us vessels for God's blessings and God's presence. The fact that God does not change us for another nation is because through the binding of Isaac we became a different kind of people. The binding of Isaac changed us. It did not just bring out the powers that we had, but actually changed us into a different kind of people, a people that are ready to receive God's message, whom God could speak to. For it is only through the purification of the physical that the divine can rest upon it. And so it was the Akedah, it was the willingness to give up everything, that allowed us our communion with God. It allows the presence of God. It makes the physical purified so that God's presence can rest upon Israel. And so here we have uh, three approaches. One approach is that it was beneficial in order to be able to explain why we are the chosen people. The sect that was not within ourselves, but outside of ourselves. Spatial, going around the problem. Second approach is elevation. That this elevated Abraham to a much higher level. The third approach is that the Akeda serves as the point of communication between man and God. It purified the physical. It purified the physical body of the Jew and made the Jew capable of God's communication. It is the symbol of our people, and forever we are defined by the Akedah. We are ready to give up our lives, but 